Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today I'm going to take you with me as we make our family's absolute favorite rabbit recipe, which is Maltese Rabbit Soup. I have been waiting for this day for a while. The first two litters of this year's meat rabbit breeding season, which includes all of the boys from Acrobat's litter, who are the siblings of Dina and Lillian and Maria and Antoinette, and Zuzu's entire litter, who turned out to be all boys. Oh man, after months and months of growing them out and some fighting episodes as they were sexually maturing where we had to separate some rabbits from each other, we finally got them big enough to butcher and I butchered all 10 of them. And now we have 10 succulent, delicious, tender rabbits in the freezer. We've had rabbit meat in the freezer for a while, but it's all been big, tough breeders who need to be crock-potted. So our recipes have been limited because of how tough and hard and old that meat is. But now we have nice, young, tender bunnies who don't need to be crock-potted. And so our horizons have been broadened once again. And the first thing on our recipe list is this soup. It is so delicious, let me tell you. We actually kind of stole this recipe from someone else, but then over the years we've like changed so many things that it doesn't really resemble the original recipe anymore. So we've kind of just corrupted it into our own. It's pretty much a basic soup with a few little special spices, but the kicker here is how you cook the rabbit so that it stays moist and tender and doesn't dry out. Because rabbit meat is very lean, and it doesn't have any skin, it dries out extremely quickly, unlike other meats of a similar quality like chicken or turkey. So you have to cook it a special way, which I will be showing you today. So the ingredients you will need are obviously rabbit. We defrosted two rabbits from our freezer because we are a large family and eat lots of food. And we have doubled the rest of these ingredients as well. So if you want to make a single batch, just use one single rabbit and half of everything we use. First of all, you need some sort of broth. We have found that rabbit broth is a little weak and lacking in flavor, so we usually use chicken broth, or in this case, we're using turkey broth, but if you wanted to use rabbit broth, you could. And like most from scratch cookers, we don't really have exact measurements for everything, we just kind of eyeball it. So we just have a bunch of broth, and then we pour in as much as you want. The actual like main soup ingredients, are obviously rabbit and we also like to put in some potatoes some carrots and some peas the spices we use are salt pepper one or two bay leaves garlic and a little special ingredient that adds an extra unique delicious flavor is nutmeg not usually something you put in soup but actually tastes really good you will also need some tomato paste to help flavor the broth, and then a bit of oil to coat the bottom of your pans when you brown the rabbit. All right, now let's jump into how you actually make the soup. And you start with the most important thing, which is properly preparing and cooking the rabbit. We started by defrosting two young rabbits. At the end of every butchering day, we will rest all of our rabbit carcasses in the fridge for at least 24 hours, but sometimes even all the way up to three days so that any little bits of blood get a chance to drain out of the meat, which makes it less gamey and coppery tasting. Then we will freeze it and just defrost it whenever you want to eat. If you have a freshly butchered rabbit that you want to cook right now, I highly suggest letting it rest in the fridge for at least 24 hours before cooking it. Even though you're super excited about tasting your hard-earned meat, it'll be so much better if you let it rest and let the gamey taste drain out with the blood. Once the rabbits were tender and ready, we cut them up. We kept the front legs, the back legs, and the back strap, which is where all the most meat is. And we ended up saving and refreezing the belly flaps so we can make jerky later. And then the rib cages we just fed to our dogs. Then we prepared two frying pans on medium heat and coated the bottoms with oil. Then once the pans were fully heated up, we browned the rabbit, which basically is just cooking the very top layer of the meat. We would set it on the pan, and then as soon as the meat started turning a little bit brown, we flipped it real quick, so the middle was still nice and pink and raw, but the tops were cooked enough that it kind of acts like skin would on chicken, and it really helps to hold in the moisture. 
If you have followed other rabbit recipes, you may know that browning is a very common practice because, again, it just locks in that moisture with that hard cooked barrier instead of letting it all leach out and be kind of weird and not as delicious. Then, once the rabbit was browned, we set it in the bottom of our soup pot and dumped in the raw potatoes and carrots, mixed those together, and added in our broth. Then we added in all the spices, salt, pepper, garlic, nutmeg, a bay leaf or two. For our double batch, we did four tablespoons of tomato paste, and then we mixed the top layer, all that together. We tried not to disturb the rabbit on the bottom layer, but just mix like the middle of the soup where all the little pieces were. Then we brought the entire soup to a boil really quick, then turned it down low so it could simmer for about a half hour, just like you do to regular soup. And this gave the carrots, potatoes, and the rabbit meat a chance to cook all the way through. Once everything was cooked, we fished those big rabbit pieces out of the soup, let them cool a little bit, then deboned the rabbit, chopped it into little pieces, and added it back to the soup. Then the very last thing was we added some frozen peas. These were home garden peas that we grew in our garden, so they were blanched and then frozen, so the hot soup kind of like cooked it all by itself. But if you are using fresh peas, you can cook the soup a little bit longer until the peas are cooked through. And then the soup was done! Having all those vegetables in there mixed with those special spices gives everything a delicious flavor and you get so many unique different textures and flavors. Oh man, and this rabbit was so tender and juicy and rich. It all came together perfectly and our entire family loved it. I hope this recipe has piqued your interest and that maybe you will test it out. Even if you don't like carrots or can't have nutmeg, maybe you can take the principle of browning a rabbit and apply it to different soup recipes that you already use chicken in or something like that. The rabbit cooking principle is the same no matter what types of herbs or spices or vegetables you add into your soup. Thanks for watching!